The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Let us pray. God of power and mercy, you call us once again to celebrate the coming of your Son. Remove those things which hinder love of you, that when he comes he may find us waiting in awe and wonder for him who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light, now in the time of this mortal life in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to us in great humility that on the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The hymn appointed for today is Psalm 126. We'll say the psalm together. Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the wild horses of the Negev. Those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Glory, Glory to, to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and he did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? John said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. As the prophet Isaiah said, Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? 
John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Many of you may have read the books of Corrie ten Boom. She was uh, a Dutch Reformed woman who suffered at the hands of the Nazis for hiding Jews. The famous book is called The Hiding Place, and it talked about the regular traffic in her home uh, in Holland where Jews would come and find shelter and food and protection and then be moved on through the underground. She was, of course, caught. Someone informed on her. And she and her daughter and her sister, Betsy, were sent to a concentration camp at Ravensbrück. I remember this so well because as a child I was given both a, a copy of The Hiding Place, the book to read, which was written at a level that was good for me at, at my age, but also a comic book that told the story. And in it, Corey Ten Boom tells the story of how she learned to forgive the people who had imprisoned her and had killed her sister. Her sister died of disease. And one of the things that, that um, Betsy was famous for, Betsy was, was the one with greater faith as far as Corey was concerned. She talked again and again about the blessings they had. For some reason in the course of the searches before they had become prisoners, they had managed to smuggle a small personal Bible into the prison, which was contraband, and they would hold Bible studies. And one day they came across this passage in Thessalonians. And Corey took Betsy to task because Betsy read, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. And Corey at that point, sitting in a, co in a concentration camp, she'd had enough. She said, no, no, I can't give thanks in these circumstances. They couldn't, this, the scriptures could not possibly mean that here. <clears throat> and Betsy said, what do you mean? She said, well, look at, look at the filth we live in. Look at the lice. I can't give thanks for lice. And Betsy said, ah, but sister, the lice make sure that the guards don't come into our shacks. And that means that we can be undisturbed while we study scripture. So we must give thanks for the lice. That ability to give thanks in all circumstances is the sign of a deep and a profound maturity in faith. I don't think I have it yet. I've come close a couple of times. There are moments when I think, okay, I can give thanks for what's going on. And for the first time in the last nine months, as we begin to talk about you know, the idea of vaccinations coming and um, maybe the ending of what we've been through the last nine months, I began to understand a little bit about what Betsy had to say back in Ravensbrück concentration camp. I have had more time to study scripture than I have ever had in my working life as a priest. The, the, this strange gift of time that's been given to me by the pandemic has actually allowed me to write and think and pray in ways that the ordinary life of a bishop, administering a diocese and traveling and doing all those things, never allowed me to do. Can I give thanks for the pandemic? Well, I, I certainly can't give thanks for those who have died. I can't give thanks that people are ill. I can't give thanks for the economic upheaval. I'm not going to give thanks for that. But I will look for the kernel of the kingdom inside the very center of what's going on around us. And I will give thanks for the gift of time that I've had to study and pray and listen. Was there more of it than I wanted? Definitely. I'm a type A personality. I want to be about the business. I want to do things. But this has slowed me down. And maybe... As a diocese, we should give thanks. We should give thanks for the fact that we are learning to pray in our homes again. 
We should give thanks that we are learning to understand and worship with one another in new ways. Maybe we should learn to give thanks in the midst of everything that's going on because something is coming. Now, in the psalm and in the letter to the Thessalonians, we get a sense of something joyful is coming. Something wonderful is going to happen. Um, the Lord has done great things for us. We are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes like the water courses in the Negev. Those who seared with the, sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. There, God is acting. God is moving and doing something. And the end for us will be joyful. The end of these things will be joyful. Whether or not it is the end of all things, as God wraps up all things in that great and final advent of the second coming, or whether or not it's just this little advent that we're going through now, where we're, we have learned to pray and to listen and to work with one another in new ways. But God is moving. Something's happening. Something's coming. And there is joy. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's a wonderful blessing from Paul to the Thessalonians, but then he reminds them. He reminds them, it is not anything that you do that's going to make that happen, because it ends with, the one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. I give thanks for a childhood where I learned the stories of Corrie ten Boom, where I had the comic books to read, to learn. It's amazing at the age of 54, I can think back to comic books that I read when I was seven or eight years old and still know the story, know the circumstance and think about it. While we maybe can't find ourselves emotionally able to be thankful for everything, we should be thankful for the circumstances in which God has placed us so that we can grow and love and listen and pray. Why? Because something's coming. Something is going to happen. God is going to act. Amen. Amen. Let us stand and confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. promised kingdom, announced both to King David in ancient times and to Mary by the angel Gabriel, will go on forever. And so gathered as the Church of God in this place, let us pray together for the coming of the kingdom. Loving Father, keep the Church faithful in telling the good news, comforting the desolate, actively loving justice, and drawing many to freedom to the joy of your forgiveness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As the Church, we pray for the world, that there would be justice and integrity in leadership. Mercy for rich and poor, strong and weak, that there may be peace among nations and respect for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As the family of believers, we pray for those around us now and their needs, and for the families we represent and their needs. 
May the love of Christ be shown in what we do and how we speak and how we spend our time, our treasure, and our talent. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In compassion, we call to mind all who are locked in physical or emotional pain, all who are weighted down with worry, with guilt, or despair. Restore and refresh them, comfort and freedom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As a resurrection people, we commend to our love, to your love, those who have died to this earthly life. May they and we, in our turn, experience forever the joy of your eternity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As disciples of the living Christ, we praise you for all his life. We praise you for the prophecies fulfilled. We praise you for the promises honored and for the victory over evil gloriously accomplished in him to fill our lives with hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to the table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you as our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us pray. God of hope, renew in us the joy of your salvation, and make us a living sacrifice to you for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Eucharistic Prayer 2. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks in praise. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. He is your living Word, through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature. He lived and died as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. In fulfillment of your will, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who place their hope in you. And so he won for you a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and sorrows and to give up his life on the cross, that he might shatter the chains of evil and death and banish the darkness of sin and despair. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. Now with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, 
heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious God, accept our praise through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on the night that he was handed over to suffering and death, took bread and gave you thanks, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is broken for you. In the same way he took the cup, saying, This is my blood which is shed for you. When you do this, you do it in memory of me. Remembering therefore his death and resurrection, we offer you this bread and this cup, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your holy church. Gather into one all who share in these sacred mysteries, filling them with the Holy Spirit and confirming their faith in the truth, that together we may praise you and give you glory through your servant, Jesus Christ. All glory and honor are yours, Father and Son, with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God of promise, you prepare a banquet for us in your kingdom. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. The gifts of God are for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Merciful God, may this Eucharist free us from our sins, fill us with unending joy, and prepare us for the birthday of our Savior. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, who is Lord now and forever. Amen. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the Church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Christ, the great Son of Righteousness, shine upon you, scatter the darkness from your path, and brighten your hearts with holiness. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.